Hello everyone, welcome to Amy's Bookshelf and welcome to my next round of Buzzwordathon recommendations. So in October, life was really uh, interesting when it came to filming and editing and I was not able to get out my animal recommendations. So I'm going to do that after my November books in case you're wanting to uh, get to know my recommendations that I would have set for October's animal prompt or creature prompt. But let's get into the books that end in or have words ending in ing. Um, I have several that I think you should check out. The first one is Agatha Christie, which is The Moving Finger. This one is about a little town that is um, getting these blackmail letters and it is creating a lot of suspicion, a lot of distrust among the people, and eventually someone commits suicide because of it. So it is a nice little mystery and enjoyable if you're not expecting Marple early on. A middle grade book I'd recommend is The Case of the Missing Marquise, which is by Nancy Springer. This is book one in the Enola Holmes series. It is a lot less uh, action packed than the movie is, because the movie kind of combines the action of previous or later books with the idea of the first book. So in this first one, really, it's about Enola Holmes, who is cornered into her by her brothers into going to a boarding school, and she is determined to not let that happen. So then she runs away and she comes across uh, a boy who is missing. And it is a very good mystery series. I really enjoy it as a whole. The first few books are a little uh, unbalanced when it comes to character and mystery, but it is a well-deserved series to keep reading. That didn't come out right. It's a, well, it's a series well worth reading if you are wanting to. A uh, thriller I would recommend, which is a classic, is A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. Now this one is about um, a man who you don't know his name, he, you don't know anything about him except for the fact he has blonde hair and blue eyes, and he, at the very beginning of the book, is very much trying to kill his girlfriend who is pregnant. You don't know anything about him aside from his murderous intent, and it's all from his ideas, and like in his mind, but you don't see um other like no one says his name in the first section so you're wondering who he is and then as the book goes on more murderous plots come about uh very interesting thoroughly enjoyable and i loved loved reading a kiss before dying it is an amazing thriller that keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time and you just can't figure it out until the end so Highly recommend A Kiss Before Dying. A nonfiction that you could read, it's a big one, but you could, is Becoming by Michelle Obama. This one I found to be really interesting and not super heavy on politics, which is a good thing for me. Um, this one's really about Michelle becoming Michelle Obama and how she um, was as a single person and how she and Barack became a couple and how that survived. And then moving into first lady and how she handled the pressures of the job along with after the fact. So I highly recommend reading her biography. It's really interesting and it really covers a lot about how she grew up and the different adversities that she faced and how she used them to help her when she became first lady. A biblical fiction is Defending David by Barbara M. Britton. This one is about two people who see David when he is on the run in the Bible. In the Bible it talks about how David's son Absalom tries to take over the throne and kick him out and basically does a coup and it's about him on the run and this book is about two people a man and a woman who observe him on the run and they are true supporters of him as opposed to Absalom who's the new king. Uh, very interesting I really love this biblical fiction and this take on that era in history I would highly recommend it. One of Us is Lying is a YA mystery that I didn't love because it's YA. The certain elements of YA that I don't like was in this book, but it was a really good mystery and I thoroughly recommend it. This is by Karen M. McManus and I really enjoyed this like closed circle mystery who could have done it and these teens who are trying to figure it out, but I didn't like the romance and the super heavy uh, YA angst that comes with that. So that's why I didn't rate it super highly, but I do think it's great for if you like YA and you like that kind of book content. It was just something that I tend to avoid. So great mystery and I highly recommend that as a good mystery book. Another one is The Haunting at Bonaventure Circus by Jamie Jo Wright. I will always recommend a Jamie Jo Wright if possible. This one's about a girl who has a limp. She cannot walk 
properly, quote unquote, and it makes her feel like an outcast in the, I believe it was 30s, maybe 20s, uh, but this is about her father who owns a circus and how she connects with certain animals. But the second timeline is when a lady moves into uh, the same town with her son. This is what Jamie Jo Wright does, her books, where same location, 100 years apart or whatever, and she's trying to figure out what happened with this particular property because it's connected to a murder that was connected to the circus. So it's really cool. I really enjoy The Haunting at Bonaventure Circus. Kings of the Wild is a high fantasy, a uh, big thick adult book that I would recommend. This one's by Nicholas Eames and I really enjoyed this one. It made me realize that I can like adult fantasy. It is about this group of men who used to have a band together but they have separated due to life and due to family and now they're being called together to help one of the da men's daughters and it is in a world full of monsters and cannibals and like fighting arenas it is a crazy world and honestly i did enjoy this book a lot there were some lulls in the middle for me but overall i gave this book a four star because it was just so interesting and it made me laugh out loud it just definitely had that like sense of humor kind of like the movies red like retired extremely dangerous those ones kind of that sense of humor with within a fantasy world the next one I have is a nonfiction, which I suggest listening to, not reading. I mean, reading would be fine, but listening to would be the best way. And it is As You Wish, The Inconceivable Tales of Making the Pride, the Princess Bride. And this is by Carrie Eels? Eels? I don't know. Eels? Um, <laughs> this is a fantastic memoir about the creation of the Princess Bride with different characters who talk or different actors who talk about their experience working on the set with everybody. Carrie is really the one who created the book but everyone else kind of puts in their part. It is an amazing audiobook. Such an interesting one especially if you like the movie or the book. Um, I would really recommend like the book The Princess Bride. I would recommend checking out this memoir. A nonfiction that is quite fascinating to me was Emily Dickinson's Gardening Life by Marta McDowell. This one examines uh, Emily Dickinson, the author, through her poetry, but through the plants that she was around. So this really talks about her home life and her biography um, in the terms of her garden, but also how that impacted her writing of letters and poetry. And I think it's a really interesting take at a biography. So check it out. I think those are 10 books and I might be wrong, but I hope I'm not. Uh, I do have a couple that I am reading, I hope. One of which is Breaking the Rock and that one is by Jolene Bayak. This one is about Alcatraz, and this one will fit for the book cover book club, which is to have something shattering on the cover. So the title is Breaking. This one is a nonfiction, like I said, about Alcatraz and about the men who escaped, I believe. The other one I possibly could be reading is Breaking Free by Rachel Jeffs. This one's about the uh, polygamist cult and the LDS, LSD. Um, what is the specific name? I don't remember, but it is about her being freed from that cult and how she got out, I believe. So those are the two that I have on my radar for nonfiction November, but also for the ending in ING. So now we'll get into my October uh, recommendations that I never got out because I really want to tell you them. So the first one is Sister to the Wolf by Maxine Trottier. This one is a YA historical fiction set around, I believe it was 1500s, maybe 1600s in Canada when um, they were uh, buying people who were indigenous and selling them. And one of these girls, this girl picks up someone because she feels like she should help him. And so she buys him and sets him free, but he stays with her and her father and a romance is also part of it. I enjoyed this one. It is a little slow, but I think it's a really interesting look at that time period in history. I also had on this list The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. This is by Lisa C. And this one is about a woman who, when she's like 14, I believe, she gets pregnant and has a baby. But due to her very, uh, very small village culture that is very much looked down on. And so she ends up giving up her baby for adoption. And this book follows her and her baby as the baby is adopted into the US. Uh, it is very interesting. And the whole idea behind the book is like coincidences and the way the book was created was through coincidences. So very enjoyable, 
And I love the talk of like tea and how it's so important, but also um, the different cultures, especially because the mother is from a very small tribe and she's not like a big city. So I think it's really interesting to see how she grows. The next one I had is a middle grade written in verse, amazing book that's fat positive, And this is called Starfish. I think it's by Lisa Phipps. I am not looking at the title or the author's names right now. I just have the titles. But this one is about a girl who is shamed for being plus size. And she learns to feel confident in her own skin through the process of this book. Um, it's very short. The audiobook's like three hours long because it's written in verse, but it is fantastic. Everyone should read Starfish. I also have on this list Mr. Popper's Penguins. This one is a children's classic written by Richard Atwater, I want to say, um, in like the 30s. So it definitely has stereotypes from back then, but it is really interesting to read about a man who acquires a penguin in New York City and how he, uh, how he deals with that. He acquires two penguins and it's just so funny at points and the way that they carry themselves and the adventures they have. It's very short and very easy to read. I have Beastly on here and I'm trying to remember the author's name. I feel like it's Alex Finn, but I might be wrong. This one's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's set in modern day New York as well. Um, well, not modern day compared to Popper's Penguins, but New York. I really enjoy this Beauty and the Beast retelling because it modernized the beast element. So instead of being covered in fur, he's covered in metal and it is just very different than what you would expect, I think, with like, I don't know, classic Beauty and the Beast retelling. So I really enjoyed Beastly and I think it's well worth it if you like those kind of retellings or if you like, I don't know, modernized fairy tales, this is definitely one for you. My Agatha Christie is the most trap this time. This is a play and it's based on Three Blind Mice, which is also a short story you could read too. I haven't read the short story though. I can only say I've watched the play and it is a really interesting one. I found the play on YouTube if you're wanting to watch the play instead of just read it. And this is about a little like inn lodge that is snowed in with several guests. Uh, the police officer comes and he says that someone here is out to kill somebody and you have to figure out who before they die. Uh, very interesting premise and very, very cool. I love that it's the play that stayed the longest on, was it Broadway or one of those until COVID shut it down. So it's an amazing mystery and I did kind of figure it out, but I loved watching it play out. I had to go with the language and the wardrobe for this recommendation list as well, because this is a favorite of mine. This is a classic childhood Naomi read, and it is so, so heartwarming to me. At least the line, which in the wardrobe, it, I would recommend reading that one first, but I think the whole series is so enjoyable and I would recommend it. If you don't know what The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is about, it's about four children who are pulled into this land of Narnia and they, have adventures. Um, it's very like set in this fantasy world, pilot, like portal fantasy kind of thing. And yeah, it's great. If you're wanting an easy out, I had on my list The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen. This is one that I am happy to read when I'm trying to read easy books. I easily pull out a little fairy tale from Hans Christian Andersen or someone else, a little short story. But The Ugly Duckling is a really cool one to read in its original not German, but original English form. I also have on here Indian Horse, which I believe is by Richard Wagamese. I hope I'm saying that last name right. Uh, he is an indigenous author who has since passed away and it is about his experience, like it's a fiction, but it's kind of based on his experience in the residential school and uh, playing hockey, if I'm remembering the right book of his, which I believe I am. It's really incredible and powerful and I would recommend reading some of his work. It's it's powerful to uh, to think about. The last books I had on here were by Joan Nesbo, which was Cockroach, which is I think book three in the Harry Hole series. And I think with Harry Hole series, you might be better off skipping book one, which is The Bat. So you could read that one too, you, or you could have read that one too. But the but Cockroach is where they start to like pick up, I believe. Um, it's really an interesting concept with Harry Hole. And I believe that's one in Singapore. I could be wrong, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely an interesting way to like look at the world, I think. And they do travel a fair amount. So yeah, Harry Hole series. I have a few in that one that is 
an animal title. The one I am still currently reading at time of filming is The Leopard, and that was supposed to be my October book, so I'm going to try and finish it in October. But yes, definitely recommend Harry Hole series, but you might want to skip the first couple. So that is it for my recommendations. I also actually have one more, which uh, I don't know if you've ever read Dracula, but I'm going to count Dracula as a creature. Um, and I did read that one in October. So I definitely think it's a fun one to read and a great one to put into this category. Uh, classic vampire story and doesn't always hold up with everything feminist wise, but it is um, a Victorian classic. So you kind of have to read that with your Victorian glasses on. So definitely one that I enjoyed this month. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down below what you'll be reading for the Buzzwordathon this time, or if you have any other recommendations. I am hoping to get back into this uh, filming mojo. So please let me know what you would say down below for your picks. And I'm excited to pump out more videos for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.